did we? <laughs> Father, I thank you that you are living within us, that you have your plans and your purposes for us, and that you want to inspire us in you today. I pray that you will just help us to hear what your spirit is saying to the church, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today is a special birthday. Do any of you know whose it is? The church. Happy birthday, church. <laughs> I won't sing. <laughs> uh, I suppose some of you here are old enough, like, like myself, to remember Whit Sunday walks, are you? Did you ever do them? A few. I mean, where we lived in Manchester, it was a very big thing. You know, the church came out and they walked through the streets. I used to get a new white dress, white ribbons in my hair. I used to love it because I got a new white dress and white ribbons in my hair. And we carried banners, but I've got no idea what they said. Um, but thinking on it now, it was a walk of witness. It was the church saying, we're here and we care. And we're out here in your streets because we care. And I thought, would we do that today? Probably wouldn't be politically correct. There'd probably be a problem because you're excluding some minority people. And we've lost a very, very lot in the past, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years. So, going to talk about Pentecost today. Are you all excited that it's Pentecost Sunday and you could hardly sleep last night and it's all you've been thinking about? And Is that true? One person. That's good. At least one. I used to be very excited about Pentecost. Coming of the Holy Spirit, the power, the excitement, the inspiration of it. And about today, what do we think today? Pentecost, it's 50 days after Easter. It's celebrated along with a Jewish feast of Shavuot. There are three times a year when the Jewish people came up to Jerusalem, and this is one of them. Shavuot means the harvest, the ingathering. Just as tabernacles is the sound of trumpets to herald in the end. You see, there is meaning in so much that we don't quite understand. So here we are on Shavuot, on the day of Pentecost, talking about an ingathering of a harvest. And this is a context. That's why there's so many people there from all over, because that was what you did. Three times a year, you came up to Jerusalem. So that's sort of the context of this. If you think that Jesus had just ascended into heaven and the disciples were suddenly left alone and they hadn't read the book because the book hadn't been written then so they didn't know it was all going to be all right so they might have felt a bit lonely and they might have felt a bit afraid but Jesus told them to wait and that the gift of the Holy Spirit would come to them. So there they are. And then the Holy Spirit falls. When we read it, we've read it probably so many times. Can you imagine what it would be like to be there, thousands of you, and suddenly there's this sound like a rushing wind and tongues of fire come? It wouldn't be a normal day. It really wouldn't. And you probably wouldn't know what was happening. But this is something of God. When the Holy Spirit came, they were emboldened. Now think about this for ourselves today. Emboldened with strength, courage, gifts, inspiration and fire to continue Jesus' work. Are we on fire today to continue the work of Jesus in this world? Or are we sitting comfortably? This Pentecost signifies a new period in God's dealings with his people. The fullness of the Spirit in God's people is to empower them for what? For witness to all nations. And probably that's why, thinking back on it, we had this uh, wit walk. It was actually a witness. We were coming out of our buildings 
as a people, men, women, young, people pushing prams, and we came out as a witness to say we believe in Jesus and we will walk through our streets letting you know that. So there was the spirit to empower for witness. So the point of Pentecost is a mission. And had Nick been here today, I would have said that we want to honour the flame in his heart and others I know who have such a passion for the lost and that they inspire us to do that too because that is actually Pentecost for mission and the goal of mission, what's the goal of mission? That the whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Do you ever think like that? Or is our thinking so little and narrow? Would you love to see the glory of the Lord fill this earth? As we were talking about the sermon yesterday, there was a wonderful opportunity to be on television and to just go for it without any restraints at all and just speak God's word. What a fantastic opportunity. And thank you, Megan, for letting a minister from your country come and speak with passion and power in a way that so few of us ever do here. Our hearts are to be inflamed with a longing to see some from every nation, tribe and tongue bowing before the exalted Lord Jesus is that part of our thinking do we long to see people from every nation kingdom and tongue how big is our vision how deep is our longing we're told in scripture that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all nations and then the end will come has the gospel been preached to all nations yet I don't know because I don't even know how many nations there are but there's more than the 20 God I thought there were and has the gospel been preached to them all now we're in a season where the Holy Spirit dwells within us permanently and now I'm going to move into some challenging things please forgive me but I can't help it <laughs> In scripture, Jesus is referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I believe that there is a time now where the lion is beginning to roar and he's beginning to roar over the nations. The Holy Spirit is not depicted as a lion roaring. The Holy Spirit is depicted as a gentle dove. Ignore the dove and just think of any bird. You make a loud noise near a bird, what does it do? It flies away. Easily scared, easily moving away. So here's the first challenge. I've done all these to myself and I am still doing them, but I think it keeps us awake in a time when we can so easily decide to go to sleep. First one. Is the gentle dove at home in our hearts? Is he comfortable there in our hearts? And then we're told in scripture that we're not to quench, grieve or resist the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a personal being and you can't grieve an impersonal force. So now we'll look at this. Do we quench the Holy Spirit? Well, I, I said at ministry team a couple of weeks ago something that sounds very amusing, but it's not really. Quench the Holy Spirit. So you come to church and the Lord gives you a, a picture or a word to share but of course you're probably not going to do it just in case it's not right or just in case or in case or whatever so the best way to deal with this I've found through all the years of my Christian life is 
you ask God if it's really from him and then you count to ten and then you're about to say it but then you think no I'll count to five and then I'll say it and then you think I'll count to three and if nothing else is happening then I'll say it and you count to three and at that moment some rotten person sitting there in the church says what you were about to say and you think I was about to say that. That's typical of them to get in first. That's number one, resisting the spirit. Not being open, being more concerned about what man or woman might think. To grieve the Holy Spirit, and this is very, very hard. Because... We want the Holy Spirit of God to be comfortable inside us and at home. And we want to be careful that we don't grieve this gentle Holy Spirit of God. So we might be careful what we say. You know, not all of us are very careful what we say. But for most of us, we can be careful what we say so we keep it zipped up. But the scripture actually says... May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. So I can be sitting there looking very holy, but the meditation of my heart is grieving God because I'm thinking things about other people that are not in line with God's love, mercy and compassion. And that happens so often. And so we grieve the Holy Spirit, this gentle dove. And we tend to think that that's all right. But it's not really all right. It's actually very, very sad. And I would like us to get to a place where the meditations of our heart are in line with what God wants for us. And sometimes we can think, well, it's so very difficult. This has happened and that's happened. So there are our brothers and sisters in other countries that go somewhere to meet, to spend time with Jesus, their, their version of, of church. They could get shot or stabbed on the way there. Things are difficult for them too. It's not all just how we are. Worldwide, there are difficulties and there are problems, but we are not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The next thing is we are not to resist the Holy Spirit of God. And perhaps there are some of you here who think, well, Holy Spirit, that's not really my thing. There probably are, you know, some of you. You think, well, that's for other people, more, more what, more spiritual people or more gullible people that just like that sort of thing and so we turn off for anything that mentions Holy Spirit but I want to tell you that if you've given your life to Jesus Christ then you already have the Holy Spirit whether you like that or not the problem is what are you actually doing about him in your life today I can remember, and I'm sure you all can, wonderful times in the past when the Holy Spirit moved in power. Wonderful, wonderful times. But, nevertheless, how is it today in our life? How is it today in our church? Is God at home in our hearts? The Holy Spirit is like the wind, an invisible power. And one of the most powerful effects is when he imparts spiritual life to those who are dead in their sins. Now I can ask you, were you once dead in your sins? And if you say no, you weren't, I'm oh, sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> Because we're all dead in our sins and that's why we needed a saviour and that's why Jesus came. Not for a fun 30 years here on earth, but because we were dead in our sins and we needed life in him.
So are we alive in God today or are we lukewarm or cold? Or are we on fire with a passion for his name as we've sung in some lovely worship songs and as we did that, I don't know about you, but I felt the, the love and the power of God and I thought, yes, this is what we want. This is our desire. The Holy Spirit purifies God's people, igniting their cold hearts with a renewed passion for knowing God and burning off the dross of the world that contaminates them. Are we contaminated by the dross of the world? Easy to happen. So, so easy to happen. And then what I think is probably the worst challenge of the things I wrote down is this. Would I have missed the Holy Spirit of God if he had withdrawn from me this past week? I'm not going to say anything on that. It, as it says, it speaks for itself. Because we just get used to doing the Christian stuff. We've been doing it for so many years, we're actually quite good at it by now. But if the Holy Spirit withdrew from us, would we notice? <coughs> because we live so easily in our human power, in our human life. Uh, and we forget how much we need God. And his work bears fruit. Our work, however hard we work at it, doesn't. And that's really discouraging. But his work bears fruit. Bears fruit forever and ever. So it's his work, his life, his power that we need. It says the power of the Holy Spirit isn't given just to make me happy. I was very upset about that. Because you see, I thought it was. I thought it was to make me happy so I could clap in the worship songs and raise my arms up. But I can't raise this one much because there's something wrong with the shoulder for years. But this one I can. So that looks good. And in a really good... I can do this. What, what, what's, what's it saying? What, what's, it, what's it doing? What's truth? What's real? If the Holy Spirit isn't given just to make me happy, although there is joy in knowing a walk with God and the fullness of his Spirit, so why is it given? It's given to make me holy. And that makes me want to cry. It's given to make me holy. So that my life and my words can bring glory to God. And I wrote down, Amen. Because that's what I would really long for. That's what I'd long for for our church. That we be a holy people that get out there and we give glory to God. And we don't just sit back, tired, worn out, disillusioned or whatever is going on in our life, that we actually get back that first love. Because Jesus said in one of the letters to Revelation, I have this against you, that you have lost the love you had at first. Repent and come back to me. And that's how I feel. Although there are moments when we're singing lovely worship songs where I, I feel again that touch of God, that passion for the lost there are things that stir me but not enough and not as often as they used to do and I would like to see us come back to a place where we understand and we long for the power of God in our lives because otherwise we live a very human normal life and we pop to church on a Sunday and maybe a group midweek and and that's it but that isn't what Pentecost was about, it was about an indwelling of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. And I finish with reminding you of something that um, God said to me 
very clearly one of those few things where you know it's God almost like an audible voice and I've told you I was sitting on a bench in Harrogate because I'd gone to a new wine leaders conference and I can't cope with being shut inside if the weather's nice and I can't cope with session after session of people talking too many so I sneaked out and missed one sat on a bench and as clear as anything and God said to me you are not normal and this usually draws laughter and response from people because they all think I'm not but I'm not talking about that I'm talking about the fact that I'm not normal and the reason I'm not normal is that I am a child of God and God lives in me by his spirit therefore I should not expect to live a normal boring safe little life and the other thing that happened to me on the same thing is that um, somebody here in our church not here today I was telling them something that was happening in my life and how I'd responded not in a very nice way to the person that had said something and this lady said to me well you're only human and at that point I thought no that was a, a life-changing word for me I thought no I'm not normal and I'm not just human I carry within this body the Holy Spirit of Almighty and all-powerful God and therefore there should be a change therefore there should be life-changing things that happen around me and that happen around you and we lose our expectation and we lose our hope and we lose our faith and we need to get that back because I tell you these days in which we're living if you ever watch the news, you don't need me to say anything else. They are awesome days. And what the world needs now is love. Amen.